Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode in my CSS Tailwind mini series. Now, in this video, we will be going over basic positioning and styling using Tailwind. Um, and kind of for some subtopics, I am first going to be going over the kind of general way that we style things with Tailwind, because um, as you kind of use different pieces of it, you'll start to notice a real pattern in the way everything is named and in the way the actual class names are formatted. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and elaborate a little bit on that. And again, as you kind of see the rest of what Tailwind has to offer, you'll notice even if you don't necessarily know how to apply a given style, you might be able to infer how to actually write it out using Tailwind. Um, and, and then, of course, specifically to this lesson, we'll be going through width and height and padding and margin, which are the basic um, forms of positioning and styling. So we're going to go ahead and get straight to it by opening up our index.html. I'm going to save this and then hit the go live button down here that will go and start up our <clears throat> little website. So um, just as a quick recap, in the previous episode, we linked this Tailwind CSS, uh, what's called a CDN version. Um, and that's just the thing that you can add straight to your website to get it working right away. Uh, if you do, uh, you know, I'll probably make cover how to actually install it in the future, but this is kind of using the web-based version of it. Um, and then once you have that installed or, you know, in your website, you can start using it right away. So in the last episode, we used a basic class called bg-green-400. And I'm actually going to pull up, or I'm going to come here to this uh, right here. And let's open up the Tailwind docs by clicking on my link here on tailwindcss.com slash docs. And you can just go to the website, of course, and then hit the documentation button. And again, the way we got that is by searching up background color. Now, the general format for Tailwind CSS things is you'll have whatever, you know, the name is like BG or sometimes it'll be width or a W for width or whatever. Um, and then you'll have a dash always. And then after the dash, it'll be like a specifier. So specifically for colors, the specifier will be the color itself. So if you want to have gray, if you want to have red, you know, if you want to have yellow, and then after you'll put another dash and then that number after it will be the shade of the color. So if say I wanted to add some precision, let's let's change this to 440 and notice, um, or actually I, I think it's only in increments of 100 actually. Um, so yeah, 400 and then if I change this to 300, you know, 200. So yeah, it's in increments of 100. Um, and basically, yeah, you, you put the shade after and you put the color and then you put the property. So you'll see that this kind of overarching pattern occurs a lot throughout Tailwind CSS in general. Now specifically, um, we're gonna start by introducing width and height, padding and margin using some divs. So what I am actually gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove this H1 here and we just save and notice it all goes away. And we're gonna use a div. Um, the div will have a class of, um, of well, we'll just give it a background, a background dash uh, blue maybe, dash 400. And then if I save this, notice nothing will happen. So the first kind of step to um, getting positioning and sizing working is to size our div. Um, and to doing that normally in you know normal CSS, if you used a style, um, or if you actually linked a style sheet, if you did like a link CSS and added your separate file, you would do something along the lines of background color, um, maybe blue. Um, and then that would like be what you would do. But in Tailwind, or not background color blue, my bad, um, to actually set the width, you would just do width and then like you know, 500 px or whatever, and same with height. But using Tailwind, we don't even have to add any CSS. We can just add a class. So um, basically, the way you do it is you do width is w and then dash, and then you put the number. Um, and there's a bunch of different values that you can put. Now, I'm going to come here and refer to the docs just so I can uh, explain this better, but uh, size or width. <clears throat> So yeah, notice um, there's a bunch of different classes that are in 0.5 increments. You have 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5. And the gist is um, that a, uh, a width of these uses what's called a rem. And a rem is another unit of measure in CSS. Now, up until now, we've been using pixels. So I'm going to create a little style here. Um, so uh, if, I, if I use a style tag here, um, this is like a CSS. Imagine this is CSS because this is CSS, what's inside. 
So to do this normally, we would say um, maybe uh, div, and then we would say width is um, 16 pixels. Now what happens here is um, if I reload, and I need to set a height, so let's just set a height to 16 pixels as well, and I'll remove this one from here. So notice what happens now. Um, uh, my bad, forgot to put this in. Semicolon, um, that's a little bit too small, but let's just make it 30, uh, 64 pixels, 64. And you'll see that we have our div here in the top left. Um, and again, it has a background of blue with a 400 shade. Um, and remember the lighter it is, the lower the number. Um, so we'll leave it at 400. So this is how you would do it in normal CSS. And that's all great, uh, within height 64. But there is another unit called rem. And rem is based on the roots. And um, if you watched my video on CSS variables, which I would recommend, or my tutorial series on CSS variables, I would recommend checking out what root is. And when you use this selector, colon root, it is basically applying a style to the root element of your website or the top element, this HTML element here. It's um, where this kind of root styles gets applied. So if, um, if you put a pixel or a font size in the root, font dash size, maybe 16 pixels, then whatever you put in here, you can actually reference that. And what I mean by referencing it is basically, instead of using px as a unit here, you can actually use another unit called rem. And what rem means is it's basically one rem uh, is equivalent to the same font size that's in this little root element here. So if the root element has a font size of 16 pixels, one rem will be equal to 16 pixels. So if you can do some a, a basic multiplication here, to get 64 pixels, we could change this to 4 REM, and notice we'll get the same results over here. And basically, that's how the sizing works in Tailwind CSS. So when we go W dash, the number that we put here will be the number of REM that we will uh, set the width to. So for example, if we want to set it to 4 REM, uh, we will actually, sorry, my bad, I explained this uh, a little weird, we will put a w-1. And the reason for that is, is um, if you come here to the reference, w-1 uh, has a width of, or, or my bad, uh, w-16. I had it the wrong way around. w-16 over here is a width of 4 REM. And the reason for that is every tailwind unit is one quarter of an REM. So if I go ahead and save this, notice that we will get the exact same thing if I remove this div styling. So, um, or we should get, or my bad, we need to add a height as well, so h-16. And after doing that, we get the exact same result. So again, in Tailwind CSS, when we want to set the width and height of an element, we use a w and an h, and then we put a dash after, and we put the number of units. Now, uh, for don't forget, a unit in Tailwind, one Tailwind unit, is equivalent to 0 0.25 rem, which, um, which is equivalent to four pixels in this example, because one REM is 16 pixels. So uh, just as a final recap, um, one REM is the same as the font size inside the root, which most commonly is 16 pixels by default. Um, and again, a, a, a Tailwind CSS unit for sizing is equal to one fourth of an REM. Uh, so basically four pixels. So in order to get it to be um, Basically, instead of in order to get it to be 64 pixels, we want to set them to 16. So yeah, that's how we do basic sizing in Tailwind. And again, this does get easier because before we had to write out the styles individually, but now we have a very, very, very quick way to apply styles in our things. So like we wanted to create, you know, a div, um, a div with a class of maybe BG red 400. And then we want to make it the same size as, as this thing, uh, as this other div. We just do that. We just add those classes in and we save. And now we suddenly have a red 400 just like that. And you know, if I was using vanilla CSS, this would be a lot harder because I would have to come up here. I'd have to add like maybe a, a, like an ID. And then I'd have to like come here and select the ID. Like it, it just takes a lot longer to use vanilla CSS. And this allows us to create our styles very, very quickly. And that is really what's uh, so powerful about Tailwind. That's the value proposition that they offer. Now, of course, aside from width and height, we have padding and margin. Now, padding and margin, if you do not already know, uh, are basically spacing or ways to space out our elements. And really quickly, I'm going to change this to 32 just so we can get a little bit bigger elements. Um, 
And fun fact, you can also use other things. You don't have to use numbers. You could use one half to get one half of the screen, um, one third to get a third of the screen. You can use fractions. Um, and you can also use, uh, I think it's, I believe it's width. No, yes, it's width. Um, using width uh, and same, yeah, for, for width like that, we'll set it to the entire width of the screen. You can also use full. And full will uh, set it to the entire length of the container, which in this case is still the screen. So width or full, um, and then you can also use one half, you know, fractions, or you can just use plain numbers like thirty-two, which will be um, thirty-two divided by four will be eight rem, um, and then eight rem is going to be eight times sixteen pixels, basically, which you know ends up being I believe one hundred and twenty-eight pixels. So again, that's how you style sizing. And then when we want to add padding, it's just as simple as P or M for padding and margin. Now, um, to kind of showcase this, I'm going to have to add some text on the inside. So let's add a hello. Um, in fact, we'll say hello blue and then hello red. And just to save this, um, we have our hello blue and hello red. And, you know, margin is the most common form of spacing. Let's say we wanted to make it, uh, let's just say, you know, a couple pixels, uh, four pixels margin. So I'll add an M-1 because remember, these units are the same across all kind of properties in Tailwind. So adding that will add a tiny bit of margin. In fact, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. Um, margin 4 will make it 16 pixels of margin, and that will add some spacing around our elements. Now the difference between margin and padding is padding is internal spacing. And you'll see what I mean when I type in P-4 and P-4. You'll notice on the text here, they'll move away from the corners and towards the center. And that's because there's four or 16 pixels of inner padding on each of these divs now that I've added a P-4. Now, um, if you'll know from CSS, you can actually specify the direction of the margin and padding uh, in CSS. And again, that's margin top, right, bottom, and left. And that's as simple as doing margin. Uh, let's just say we only wanted to have margin on the left. We can save that. And now there's the margin on the top is gone. Let's just say, again, we want the margin to only be on the left for the red, and now these two are touching each other because there is no top margin or bottom margin for the blue and or the red. So, you know, that's how you, spec uh, that's how you specify the direction, basically. And let's just say we only wanted to have some padding top for both of these, so now the text will be on the left. Or let's just say we only wanted to have padding left, um, like that. And then, so we still are touching the top, but they are being pushed away from the left. And that is basically how you can add margin padding width and height. It's just as simple as W, H, M, P, and then you can add the specifiers for the direction, and then you do a dash, and then you do the number. And as a kind of little comment I'm going to add here. Um, so one rem is the size of, um, or is the font size in the root, um, and then one tailwind unit is one fourth of a rem. So it's as simple as that. Um, that's the, the English way to write it out. One rem is the font size in the root, 16 pixels, and one tailwind unit is one fourth of the rem, or four pixels in this case. So four tailwind units, like ML4, is exactly 16 pixels. And that's all you really need to know. Um, so yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, you can check out the playlist, which will be linked in the description, where I'm currently uploading daily for this Tailwind CSS mini-series. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications whenever I post new videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.